by heart, get ready. Fantasy football is here. Welcome to the Full-Time Fantasy Show. FullTimeFantasy.com is home to the Fantasy Football World Championships and the best players in the world. Real money winners giving their secrets to help you win. Now exclusively on iHeart. This is the Full-Time Fantasy Show with your host, the one, the only, Dr. Roto. Dr. Roto, get out the insurance cards, get out the copay. The office is open, my friends. All right, we're going to give a little news and notes, and then we're going to get to the games of the week. So uh, let's see what happens here. Um, I want, let's talk about it. So Chester Rogers, done for the season. Eric Ebron, done. Paris Campbell, not 100%. Marlon Mack, not 100%. T.Y. Hill, not 100%. The Colts are just failing faster than some of my fantasy football teams. Not good. Titans look to be the favorite to win this division. Tell me I'm wrong. All right, Baker Mayfield expects to play against the Bengals. But I'm not happy about this because this can be more running and I want to see more throwing from Baker Mayfield. I need him this week. Austin Hooper expected to resume practicing this week. That's a good sign. Uh, We really need Hooper back in a lot of in a lot of our leagues. Jamal Adams leaves the stadium with a walking boot on his foot against the Bengals. That's not good. Um, He's their Jets' best player by by far, not by a little, by far. All right, let's get to the games of the week. Let's start with the Sunday night game. I know if you look at the score, twenty eight twenty two. If you didn't see the game, you're like, oh yeah, this was close. This wasn't close. This wasn't close at all. Tom Brady was a Very frustrated, but I will say this. I did say in the game, I thought that it was going to be Duke Johnson, and I thought it was going to be the tight ends. Hopkins, you know, had an okay game. Will Fuller did nothing. Kenny Stills had a, you know, was going to play. That's true. But for the most part, it was a Duke Johnson and a tight end game. Carlos Hyde did nothing. So the game turned out to be almost exactly as I predicted, I didn't predict the Texans winning, but who did well for the Texans, I predicted. But you know what was shocking to me? The New England Patriots, whose defense has been so good all year, couldn't put any pressure on Deshaun Watson. You give that dude time, he's going to win games. For New England, they couldn't get any separation. Brady was screaming on the sidelines. Separate, 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 right? James White is so important to this team, they've got to get him on the field more. He's critical. But look, Edelman is a beast. Jacoby Myers, Sanu, Dorsett, Matt Lacoste. Do you really think the Patriots are winning this Super Bowl? I mean, look, they're a good team. They're a great defensive team. But the offense is not very good. I don't think they beat the Saints. I don't think they beat the 49ers. I don't think they beat the Ravens. I just don't. I'm being quite honest with you. I think that there's a lot of holes in this team. There's a lot of holes in this team. All right, so let's take a look at the other games of the week. The Titans against the Colts. Derrick Henry is just a man. I mean, he is so good. Right now, if we had a redraft, I think he might be a first-round draft pick. Let me me see if I agree with that. I mean, I know I just said it, but do I agree with what I even just said? Please hold. Please continue to hold. Thank you for holding. Derrick Henry, yeah. So far... 232 attempts, 1,140 yards, 11 touchdowns, 200 yards receiving, two touchdowns. That's a first-round pick to me. That's a first-round pick to me. And by the way, we've got a few games left against Oakland, Texans, twice against the Texans, and the Saints. Saints are going to be a rough week. But Oakland and the, and the Texans, I think he'll figure it out. He's a really good player. What the Titans do need is they need A.J. Brown or Corey Davis, or somebody, anybody to step up and be a true number one receiver. They were hoping Corey Davis was going to be that. He's not. They were hoping A.J. Brown was going to be that. Maybe. I don't see it, but maybe. Right? But they need that, and then they could be a really good team. All right, the Redskins and Panthers. I don't know how Ron Rivera doesn't get fired. I don't know how he doesn't get fired, but I want to say this. This is one of those, when I look back and I look at the box score, I say to myself, I should have had this. The Panthers' run defense is terrible. And I just didn't play Geis because I thought to myself, 
Panthers are going to be winning this game by so many that guys won't even do that much. But the truth of the matter is the Panthers aren't that great a team. Kyle Allen is very mediocre. They went out to a lead, but the Redskins chipped away, chipped away, chipped away. And Geis and Peterson ran for over 200 yards between them. So retrospectively, I looked at the game in a certain way. And I mean, I always evolve as a fantasy analyst. And I hope I continue to evolve as an analyst. I need to do better. I need to, I need to figure out a pathway for, for guys to have done better. I do. All right, the Ravens against the 49ers. Are you telling me? Seriously, are you telling me that wasn't a playoff game? That could have been a Super Bowl game, and I would have been just fine with that. Lamar Jackson didn't do that much, but he did enough. And look at what they had to do. Jackson barely threw the ball, but he ran it. And that's how Baltimore is going to have to win these big games. It's going to be not in the arm of Lamar Jackson, but the legs of Lamar Jackson. That's going to be the difference. For the 49ers, I thought they ran the ball exceptionally well, but you can't throw the ball on the Ravens. George Kittle, 2 for 17. Emmanuel Sanders, 4 for 41. When the 49ers look back at this, they're going to realize that's a problem. You're not going to be able to beat the Ravens if you can't throw on the Ravens, and it's really hard to throw on the Ravens. So I need to admit to you how very, 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 and I can't even understate the varies, how wrong I was about about Nick Foles. So if you want to be angry at me, feel free. All I can do is tell you this. I learned from a man named Tony Sincata never to confuse the result from the decision. I stand by the Foles play. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers are not a good pass defense. And I thought Foles made a lot of sense. The Jaguars are coming off a brutal loss. Foles needed to play better. And the Tampa Bay defense is a funnel. But the truth is, Foles played horribly. And so did Gardner Minshew. And you know what? Maybe, I know this sounds crazy, maybe the Bucks' defense is a whole lot better without Vernon Hargraves. Maybe he was holding them back. Maybe Carlton Davis is a pretty darn good player. Just throwing that out there. So, I was wrong. If you played Nick Foles, I am truly sorry. I lit money on fire as well. I don't like doing that. Now, for the Buccaneers... If you played Mike Evans or Chris Godwin, you're going to be upset. Four for 50 is not what you expected. And Peyton Barber stealing two touchdowns, that's not what we hope for. But I'll tell you this, Doug Marone, F-I-R-E-D, fired. There's no, I don't even know why he's not fired today. I, I have not figured this out yet. There's no purpose of this guy staying there. I mean, what do you want to see him for the next three weeks? Oh, don't change it now. I don't know. I'd want to see a defensive coordinator. I'd want to see a special teams coach. I'd want to see anybody in there. This guy's done. And by the way, Nick Foles, not a good purchase. That was I didn't feel it was a great purchase at the time. I feel it's less now. And to be quite honest with you, isn't Gardner Minshew probably better moving forward? Wouldn't you rather have Gardner Minshew for nothing than Nick Foles for as much as it cost? All right, Packers against the Giants. I'm just going to give you a name, Alan Lazard. I think Alan Lazard is going to start being the wide receiver two there for Green Bay because Aaron Rodgers loves him. He does. Now, the Giants are terrible, terrible. And Danny Dimes, man, makes so many fumbles and mistakes. It's just not good enough. Now, I'm going to, I'm going to cut him a break. I'm going to cut him a big break because he's a rookie. But next year, can't do this. Can't play the way he is. But I like the fact that the Giants are allowing him to make mistakes. I do. I like that. But moving forward next year, I'm not going to be so nice. Jets and Bengals. It's criminal how bad the Jets are. You know, you watch the Jets and you're like, oh, wow, they played great. They killed the Raiders. Now they're going against the, the winless Bengals. Did you have any doubt in your mind the Bengals were going to win this game? They had no, I had zero doubt in my mind. I benched Sam Darnold everywhere. I didn't want to play any Jet except Le'Veon Bell. I don't like any Jet. And that's terrible to say that. Because the Jets always show up poorly in these spots. It's predictable. Very predictable. Good job for the Bengals. I don't know whether they'll win two games. I think they want to win one. One is good. Two might be too many because they don't want the Giants to have the first pick. Okay. Browns against the Steelers. Can we just stop for a second and give all the credit in the world to Mike Tomlin? I know that people like bashing this guy, 
but let's just stop for a second. He's playing without a quarterback. Juju's hurt. Uh, no Antonio Brown. Half his team is injured. And, he, and James Conner's not there. And they're winning games. They're winning games. They beat the Browns badly. That defense is good. That Nika Fitzpatrick trade was a really good trade. You know what you're getting with that guy. I, like, I really like him. Devlin Hodge is good, but I love this kid, James Washington. He's just playing better and better. All right, the Eagles and Dolphins. Oh, man. I got to give credit to Steve Renner once again. He said the Dolphins were going to win by, a t- by 10 points. He was a little off. They only won by six, but he was right that the Dolphins won. I mean, everybody and their grandmother must have thought the Eagles were going to beat the Dolphins, but the Dolphins outplayed them, and Devontae Parker was the best player in that field. Tell me I'm wrong. Best player in that field, Devontae Parker. Going to get a huge payday. All right, the Rams against the Cardinals. I mean, the Cardinals are just not a very good team. They've got to figure this out defensively. When Tyler Higby is catching seven passes for 100 yards and a touchdown, you know you're in trouble. You've got to fix this defense. All right, I know you got Kyler Murray. I know you you got Kenyon Drake. I know you got Christian Kirk and Andy Isabella, but you've got to fix this defense. It's terrible. For the Rams, Jared Goff was good, but is he really that good? Or is he just playing the Cardinals? All right, Chargers-Broncos, one of the craziest finishes I've ever seen. I mean, literally, this game you think is going to go into overtime. Drew Locke chucks the ball down the field, and Casey Hayward commits pass interference. OMG. What a way to end this game. What a way to end this game. I can't, I couldn't believe it. Shocked. Shocked. And then Brandon McManus comes and kicks a field goal. But Drew Locke looked real deal to me. He did. He didn't look scared, which is what I like to see. And let me tell you something. Deshaun Hamilton dropped a couple of really open passes. That's not a Drew Locke thing. That's a Deshaun Hamilton thing. He's not good. You know who is good? Darwin Thompson's good. And we'll talk about him more on the waiver wire report. I like what I saw there. Darrell Williams dealing with a hammy. Damian Williams not healthy. LaShawn McCoy slowing down. Darwin Thompson looked really good at the end of that game. By the way, I don't know what happened to the Raiders. They don't look like any team that I remember. They need a win so badly next week to fix this. Otherwise, their season is done. They are hanging by a thread. All right, tonight, the Vikings against the Seahawks. Let's break it down for you. You cannot run on the Vikings, but you can throw on them. Okay? So, Russell Wilson, big night. Tyler Lockett, big night. DK Metcalf, big night. Jacob Hollister, an okay night. Josh Gordon, okay to good. I don't love Chris Carson. I don't want to chase the points with Rashad Penny. I know the Vikings are going to stop the run. They are, but they don't stop the pass very well at all. So all those guys I mentioned, you get them into your lineups. For Minnesota, Adam Thielen is now not, he's ruled out, which I think is a big loss to a lot of people. And I didn't see this coming, but it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's horrible. It is, it's horrible. Dalvin Cook, going to be a big, big contributor. Stefan Diggs big. And look at your tight ends, Kyle Rudolph and Irv Smith. I think those guys are going to need to make plays. If they don't make plays, uh, the Vikings have no chance to win. But right now it's time to put away the insurance cards, put away the copay. The office is closed, my friends. Remember, you can check me out at 2 p.m. Eastern on the on FNTSY Sports Radio. I'll be there. And remember, at fulltimefantasy.com, enter the promo code ROTO50 for 50% off your first two months. All right, guys, this is Dr. Roto saying be well and take care. Thanks for listening to Full Time Fantasy. There's never been a better time to join and go full time. Visit fulltimefantasy.com. Use the promo ROTO50 for 50% off your first two months. And don't forget, fantasy players, please thumbs up the podcast on the iHeart app. See you next time.